Happy Friday. Thank you for joining me this morning. I'm here by myself this morning. Mark had some other commitments this morning. I want to give you an update we, on the uh, pastor's conference. The pastor's conference went really well. On a Monday afternoon, um, Matt, who's our director of campus ministry, and myself and four students from our campus ministry gave a presentation to the pastors from Pennsylvania and the western two-thirds of New York State on campus ministry. The students did an absolute superb job uh, and just I, the pastors were really moved by the testimony of the students, uh, the way they comported themselves and the way they answered the questions that the pastors had. Uh, so we're just so amazed at how, this, how God is working in the lives of the students in a very tough environment, let's, let's face it. A secular university, major secular university, is not an easy place to walk with the Lord and to follow his ways. So we're just, uh, we're just amazed at God's grace. We pray for continued blessing upon the students, upon um, the ministry of Revive, as we continue to reach students here at Penn State University. We're in Amos chapter 5. Um, uh, part of this chapter is a pretty famous chapter. You'll see uh, uh, quotes from various parts of this in, uh, uh, in various churches and other places. So let's, let's dig into it. Amos chapter 5. Hear this word that I take up over you in lamentation, O house of Israel. Fallen no more to rise is the virgin Israel, forsaken on her land with none to raise her up. For thus says the Lord God, the city that went out a thousand that's, that went out a thousand shall have a hundred left, and that which went out a hundred shall have ten left to the house of Israel. For thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, Seek me and live, but do not seek Bethel, and do not enter into Gilgal, or cross over to Beersheba. For Gilgal shall surely go into exile, and Bethel shall come to nothing. Seek the Lord and live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph. It, and it devour with none to quench it for Bethel. O you who turn justice to wormwood and cast down righteousness to the earth. He who made the Pleiades in Orion and turns deep darkness into the morning and darkens the day into night, who calls the waters of the sea and pours them out on the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name who makes destruction flash forth against the strong so that destruction comes upon the fortress. They hate him who reproves in the gate, and they abhor him who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and exact taxes of grain from him, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not dwell in them. You have bland, planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. And you, you who afflict the righteous, who take... <clears throat> who take a bribe and turn aside the needy to the gate. Therefore, he who is prudent will keep silent at such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, as you have said. Hate evil and love good and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord, in all the squares there will be wailing, and in all the streets they shall say, Alas, alas, they shall call the farmers to mourning and to wailing those who are skilled in lamentation. And in all the vineyards there shall be wailing, for I will pass through your midst, says the Lord. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light, as if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or went into a house and leaned his hand against the wall and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. To the melody of your harps, I will not listen. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. 
Did you bring to me sacrifices and offering during the 40 years in the wilderness, or, O house of Israel? You shall take up Sikoth, your king, and Kion, Kion, your star god, your images that you made for yourselves, and I will send you into exile beyond Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. Let's pray. Father God, teach us now from your word, the truth of your word. Teach us to examine ourselves as well and to repent of that which we have trusted in that is not you, that we may lean not upon our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. So, wow, there's a lot going on in here. Um, so, chapter 5 uh, really speaks of the devastation uh, that is going to be coming upon Israel, upon the northern kingdom. They sent out a thousand people, and there's only a hundred left. So only 10 percent. A hundred go out, and only 10 left. 10 percent, 90 percent devastation. Uh, you know, when they say an army has been de decimated, that's when you have 10 percent losses. These are 90 percent losses. Complete and utter decimation of the army. For thus says the Lord, the God of hosts of Israel. He says, seek me and live. And then he says, don't seek Bethel. Don't enter into Gilgal. Don't cross over to Beersheba. These were the false worship places, the false idols that they had set up in the northern kingdom. He says, if you think you're going to turn to them and they're going to give you deliverance, you're fooling yourself. That is not the way to go. In fact, they're going to... Those idols, they're going to be carried off by the Assyrians into exile. Gilgal should really go into exile. Bethel should come to nothing. Uh, so um, he says, seek the Lord. Now there's a call to repentance. There is hope for them. Turn from your ways. Seek the Lord and live, verse 6, uh, lest the house break, uh, fire break out against the house of Joseph. So the house of Joseph, sometimes that's used to describe the northern kingdom, uh, if you remember, Joseph got a double portion uh, of uh, the, the lands that were distributed to the tri 12 tribes of is Israel. So uh, Joseph's kids, Ephraim and Manasseh, that's the double portion, and that's part of the northern kingdom. Uh, and it says, O oh, you who turn justice to wormwood. Uh, I think in uh, the screw tape letters, one of the underling uh, devils, demons, that was going to be tempting his subject, a human being, was called Wormwood. Uh, and so he says, he, oh, you who turned justice to Wormwood, you're distorting and twisting justice for your own evil and demonic purposes. <clears throat> cast down, and you cast down righteousness to the earth. In other words, you don't care about doing the right thing. You, you just care about yourself. How much is it in it for me? What can I get out of this? This is an attitude that is prevalent today even, right? So what can, what's in it for me? What can I get out of this? What, in what ways am I going to benefit from this? Um, and so that, that thought process leads us to a path where we don't care about anybody else. We don't care about doing right. We just care about ourselves and what is it, what's in it for me. And so the Lord reminds him, he says, he who made the Pleiades and Orion, in other words, the heavenly host, he who created the universe um, and turns deep darkness to morning, it calls out the waters of the sea, pours them to the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name. God is the one who has created the universe and all that is in it. Uh, here we, are, we see that... Um, there's some, some religions would be pantheistic. In other words, God is in all, everything. But the Bible clearly teaches that uh, the creation is separate from God. God is the creator of all of these things. He's not in it in that way, in a pantheistic way. But God is the creator of all things. And so here's a very clear indicator that God is the one who made the starry host. God is the one who creates uh, day and night, the waters of the sea, the whole cycle, the climate cycle that we have, uh, everything the Lord has made. Um, and he says, 
remind him because he has that power, verse 9, he can bring about destruction. And here's what's going on, though. If someone tries to call people out for going the wrong pay, path, what is it in verse 10? They hate him who, re, who reproves in the gate. They abhor him who speaks the truth. They don't want to hear it. They want to continue on their own path, going down their own way. And therefore, because you trample on the poor and exact taxes on grain from him, for what reason? So you can build a fancy house, right? You build houses of hewn stone, but you're not going to dwell in them, the Lord says. You've done this off the backs of poor people, but you're not going to be able to live in these homes. You're going to be taken away into captivity. Uh, the Lord is upset, very upset, when we use our own position and strength and power to oppress and crush others that are weaker. Um, and he says, I know your transgressions, uh, they're great, verse 12, your sins are great. Um, you afflict the righteous who take, you take a bribe and turn aside the needy in the gate. You have no concern for the welfare of other people. Just go about your ways. Um, and so he says, seek good and not evil, verse 14, that you may live. Verse 15, hate evil and love good. Establish justice in the gate. So he's calling them to repentance. Turn to me. Because uh, it, it says it may be in verse 15 that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. If you turn to me, repent. There's an opportunity that God will relent from the disaster he's about to bring uh, if you but turn to him and repent. These calls, although we're not, um, you can't equate, again, you can't really equate the United States with Israel. Israel was a nation uh, chosen and created by God, that, that, that God is going to work through that nation. And so he's interacting with them in, in a very uh, personal way. Uh, nevertheless, if a nation uh, rejects the Lord, we will suffer consequences. We're seeing that. And that will only accelerate unless we repent and turn to the Lord. So this call to repentance is very we need to take it very, very seriously in our own lives, in our own nation, in our own communities. Um, you know, as we go down these paths, there's parts of our United States that are really pretty much uninhabitable. You, that people aren't going to move into places where it is devolved into utter anarchy and chaos. Uh, and we brought this on ourselves. Will we repent and turn to the Lord uh, and, and stop this path that we're going on. Okay, so um, there's, he reminds them in verse 16, in all the squares, there's going to be wailing, uh, mourning, lamentation, wailing in the vineyards. Why? They're losing all of their crops. They're losing all of their, they're being destroyed by this enemy that is going to come. Uh, and then he's reminded, it's like, you know, some people are always like, almost when you look at world events now, there's almost some people that are like, great, this may be the end. Uh, this may be the, the, the time when Jesus returns or whatever. And here, the prophet is saying, woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light. It's like a man fled from a lion and got attacked by a bear goes in and leans on a wall and gets bit by a snake, a, a venomous snake. <clears throat> and so there's no escaping the justice of God when he returns. But as Jesus reminded us, now is the day of salvation. Now the gates to heaven are open. One day they will be closed. Now is the day for people to turn to the Lord, to repent and turn to him. There will be a day when that door closes and it's not going to be opened again. Today is the day of salvation. And so uh, the prophet is reminding us, why would we want to have that come very quickly? There's people that I dearly love, dearly love. My heart breaks because they don't know the Lord. 
they don't know Jesus as their Savior. I want them to know Jesus. I want them to be in his presence forever. Now is the day of salvation. Um, and so the Lord in verse 21 says, you know, you're having all this. It's not as if Israel's not religious. They're having all kinds of religious stuff going on. I, but the Lord says, I hate your feasts. I take no, no delight in your solemn assemblies. So what? You're gathering together in a church assembly. Are you following the Lord? Are we, are we uh, engaged in knowing that Jesus is the Savior of the world, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, that no one comes to the Father except through him? Are we living our lives in such a way that we actually believe that and we trust in him in every aspect? I, des I despise your solemn assemblies. And even if you offer me grain offerings and burnt offerings, I'm not going to accept them. And your peace offerings and your fatted animals, I'm not look upon them because their heart would turn from the Lord. So what they're going through this religious practice that they're doing. God wants our hearts, not some external uh, way in which we show that we're super religious or some external way in which we're showing that uh, we're, we're, uh, of the Christian faith, God wants a changed heart. And not just a, a, a show. He sees right through the show. He wants to know what makes us tick, what is in our head, in our heart, what makes us really tick. Are we really following him? Do we really desire to know him? Take away from your song, so you got a choir, and you sing in the choir, do you really know the Lord and love the Lord. Um, and then there's this verse, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. The, the Lord wants us to deal with people justly, fairly, uh, that there's only a righteousness, the ultimate righteousness that rolls down is the righteousness of Jesus. That's given to us as a gift. But how we interact with others should reflect how gracious God has been to us. Now, some people want to build their whole theology around a verse like this, uh, and then they forget the rest of the scriptures. Um, this would be called the social gospel, when you're kind of like everything is about your, you know, uh, social interaction with people and and how much you care for the poor and stuff like that. Of course. We're to do that. But that's not the entirety of the scripture. And when someone reduces the Bible to a social gospel, they're missing the point. We need to repent and turn to Christ. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Our good works in, in the social area are not going to save us. That flows out of a grace relationship with God through Jesus Christ. His righteousness given to us as a gift. We didn't earn it. We don't deserve it. And then in standing in the grace of Jesus, connected to Jesus, who is the vine. Remember when Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. You can accomplish nothing apart from me. We always have to be connected to Christ. And when we are serving and loving other people, doing it in the name of Jesus, that is carrying out the Great Commission and, when, and, and uh, pointing people to the hope of Christ. That everything flows from the gospel, the, the central message of the gospel, that in Christ we are reconciled with God. In Christ we are a new creation. In Christ uh, there's a renewal of our mind and the way that we looked at, look at people around us. Um, and so God just is reminding them, you know, Hey, so what, uh, you know, I didn't ask for offerings in the wilderness when you're in the wilderness. Um, so why do you think you're going to, that's the pagan way of looking things. If I do this for God, then I'm going to get God to jump through the hoops and do these right things for me. Well, that's a pagan way of looking at God. Uh, and here they are there. They had actually rejected God and are bowing down to Sikoth, your king, and Kirion, Kion, your star god. They're bowing down to the starry host. They're worshiping the creation instead of the creator. Um, your image is made for yourselves. 
that you're going to be carried off beyond Damascus. The Assyrians come from modern-day northern Iraq beyond Syria, modern-day northern Iraq. They're going to be carried away because they're bowing down and worshiping the creation instead of the creator. Oh, Lord, have mercy on us in our, in our nation where many people are worshiping the creation rather than the creator. Let's pray. Father, help us to examine ourselves. Be merciful to us. We cry out to you. May we change, our hearts change, and our, and our hope and our trust will be put fully and completely in you and in you alone. Help us, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have a great weekend, folks. Reformation Sunday, this Sunday. Reformation Sunday.